spirit i come against witchcraft i come against every assault of the demonic you have no right to be in this place it's the house of god i'm praying for the victory tonight god that people will meet with you people will hear from you god it will not be the same again that sinners will be saved god, god the, the church, church will be edified, edified. jesus you will be lifted up tonight i pray the light of the glorious gospel will shine over this service, God, a break in this midweek service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Second Kings tonight. Second Kings in chapter seven. Second Kings chapter seven, two verses. I would encourage you to read the whole of chapter seven just to get uh, the context and the entirety of what God uh, is saying. Uh, but two verses will suffice uh, for what God wants to speak to about us, speak to us about tonight. Amen. Second Kings uh, chapter seven. Verse 8 and verse 9. Amen. Amen. We are living, if you didn't know, in the 21st century. And one day, there are going to be records written about this century, the 21st. In fact, all of the centuries. And one of the things are going to come up regarding various events that took place in every century, I believe one of the things that are going to come out regarding the records is, 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 is crime. We can talk today about crime. We can, we can talk, talk about, about uh, 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 robbery, robbery and burglary. burglary. Uh, we can talk about uh, uh, just recently, uh, we celebrated, I believe, the 20th anniversary, September the 11th. How many of you remember September 11th? I mean, we remember where you were when that happened. You know, we can talk, we can talk about just in the UK as well, just the crime of people like Jimmy Savile and, um, and Harold Shipman. I can go on and on um, uh, uh, tonight. But what many people think many times, they think that all crimes are actually committed outside of the church. And tonight, the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to us today how the church of Jesus Christ can actually be committing the crime of the century. Now, I know it's a bit corny, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's important. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, look at your neighbor saying properly, neighbor, are you a criminal? I want to preach today on the crime of the century. Let's read today. Second Kings chapter seven, two verses eight and nine, that's all the Holy Spirit needs. The Bible says, and when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried some from there also and went and hid it. Verse nine. Then they said to one another, we are not doing right. This day is a day of good news and we remain silent. If we wait until morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now, therefore, come, let us go to tell the king's household. Father, tonight we are so grateful. Again, that you would allow us to assemble and gather around your word. Father, tonight I'm praying you would save the lost. But I'm praying more than anything, God, visit the body of Christ. Father, those who are present, God, those who will ever hear this word, I pray you would deal with them, God. And I pray they will never be the same again. Father, I pray, God, let us not be criminals. We give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, uh, amen. I want to look first of all tonight very quickly at the crime, the crime, the crime, the crime. In our text today, man, God's people um, are surrounded. The Syrian army has come um, and they have besieged Samaria, which is literally Israel. Um, and what is worse, it is at a time um, of famine. It is a time where people are weak physically, but also they are defeated mentally. Um, and it is so bad. If you read 2 Kings 7, um, the people have now even began to become cannibals. They are eating one another. They are, they are basically killing uh, the one another and eating uh, the flesh of another. Of a human being, amen. So, for the sole reason um, 
of survival. And I want to stop and say this tonight. That people are still eating one another today. People are still pulling down one another and chomping upon one another. I mean, today with their words, their actions, and their deeds. And what you need to understand today is whenever there is a famine, sorry, whenever there is a, a siege in the Bible, the enemy wants to bring famine to the land. It is one of the results of warfare, that whenever there is warfare, one of the results is famine is going to begin to plunder and hit the land. So you find the people tonight that they don't have any food. And maybe tonight, I'm sure there are people tonight that you've experienced times when you did not have food. There have been times, amen, that there was no food, amen, in your home. And I'm not talking tonight about your fast tonight. I'm talking about there is no food in the fridge. There is no food in the cupboard. And let me pause and say this tonight, church, that when you have been at times when there have been no food in your house, the reality is tonight, amen, it was only limited to you. And of course, tonight, I mean, you didn't have food. It didn't mean somebody else didn't have food. When there is a famine tonight, nobody has food. When there's a famine, the whole nation, uh, amen, is going to suffer. And the reality is today, when there is no food, if you don't eat, you die. Now, in our text, there are four lepers. And the Bible says these lepers are outside the city. Tonight, they are worse tonight. Amen. They are in a worse place and they're in a worse state than those people who are inside of the city. Again, let me say this. I'm not minimizing what anybody else is going through who are, or maybe you have been through tonight. But let me say this tonight, amen. There are some people tonight who are in a worse place and a worse state than you are. I know that you're going through a difficult time. I know, amen, things are hard tonight, amen. I know, amen, you maybe feel like you're going to die or whatever is happening and the whole world is coming against you. But let me say it again. There are some people who are in a far more worse state and a far more worse place than you. And what is glorious about this is that it is these lepers that God is going to use to bring about a great deliverance to the people. The Bible tells us they begin to make their way to the enemy camp. And as they make their way to the enemy camp, the Bible says God and it begins to magnify the footsteps of these men. It's like maybe he attached the men some JBL speakers on their feet and it sounded like a whole group of, a whole host of of army of uh, 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 warmen, uh, I mean, coming against the enemy. And the Bible says they all fled uh, and they ran tonight. Uh, here is God. God tonight is making his men more than they were. And they get into the camp. There's all this food. Uh, there's all these clothes. There's all these things. The Bible says there is silver. There is gold. And there's all these things. Uh, I mean, lying there, you can imagine these men. They are lepers. Uh, they're having the time of their life. Uh, but really tonight, what I want to focus on is verse 9. Because twice in verse 9, the Bible says tonight, these men, they went, they took the gold, took the silver, even some food and clothes. They went and hid it. After they have stepped into blessing, after they have stepped into favor, after they have stepped into privilege, they found or they, they wandered into this tremendous blessing and the word of God tells us tonight, they went and hid it. Church, here are some people tonight who started with nothing. Now they have everything. And what did they do? The Bible says they went and they hid it. Church, they had nothing. Now they have it all. But we are told they went and hid it. While all that is taking place, the Bible says a famine is happening in the land. And tonight, church, when people don't eat, people die. Let me say it again. In 2021, there is a famine in the land. You may say, what famine is taking place in 2021? Amos 8, 11 simply says, not a famine of bread, nor thirst of water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. Today, we're living in a day and age where people have religion but lack righteousness. They have tradition but no truth. They, 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 they think they're good but they lack grace. Listen, they have houses and no home. They, they, they are prosperous but they lack peace. And they have everything the world says. If you have this, you're going to be happy. If you have this, everything is going to be well. But Jesus poses a question tonight. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world? 
but yet he loses his soul. What am I saying? There is a famine in the land, and in a famine, if you don't eat, you die tonight. But here you and I are. We've stepped into a good thing. We've stepped into blessing, and we've stepped into grace. So let's consider the culprits tonight. Tonight, church, we are blessed people. You may not think so. It's my job to knock your head in to realize that you are. Know that you are. You are a blessed. Listen, we are a blessed people. And let me tell you something. We are blessed for one reason alone. Grace. Full stop. Grace. There's not one person tonight who doesn't name the name of Christ. You, you, you're not, you're not, you are not a self-made man or woman. You haven't hit the lottery. People haven't finally acknowledged your greatness. No, it is the grace of almighty God tonight. And what grace is, grace is simply God's riches at Christ's expense. It is God dispensing his glory, dispensing his favor, dispensing his blessing, dispensing his mercy at the expense of his son, Jesus Christ. See, when God has led us into his amazing grace, how sweet the sound to save the wretch like me. When God, when God, when God has, has made us privy to his grace tonight, God has not given you his grace. Listen to me. God never saved you and I, so you and I will hide it tonight. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house. God has not saved you and I to hide things. God has not saved you and I to hide what he's done and doing in our lives tonight. And we want to learn from these lepers tonight because there's some powerful lessons that indeed maybe reveal that we are criminals. Number one tonight, you see this sad dilemma. These lepers are outside of the gate. They are distant. They are distressed. They are diseased. Think about it tonight, church. They were not good enough to be inside of the gate. They were not good enough to be within the, city, within the city tonight. And here are these people. They are leprous. Leprous in the Bible is always a sign of sin. When you get leprosy, parts of your body begins to fall off. You could be talking to somebody, your nose drops off. You could talk to somebody, your bottom lip drops off. You could talk to somebody, you point your man, your hand drops off. And it's simply showing the picture of how sin affects the whole man, how sin affects the whole body. And here are these four lepers tonight. I mean, nobody wants to touch them. Nobody wants to be around them. Tonight, they are doomed. They are discouraged. And they are simply with about hope. I don't know about you tonight, church. If this is not a picture of you and I before Christ, I don't know what is tonight. Listen, we were distant from God. We didn't fit in anywhere. Now, I know you think tonight, man, you were the most coolest person in the world, but you didn't fit in tonight. I know tonight, man, you think man, everyone loved you and everyone that uh, ever wanted to be around you tonight. But let me tell you something tonight, man. Without Christ, you didn't fit in anywhere. See, when it comes to fitting into the family of God, I'm thinking about the church tonight, church. We don't fit in because of, I mean, our parents or our siblings are saved. We don't fit in tonight because we come to church. We don't fit in tonight because we own or hold a Bible. You fit because of Jesus and his cross. You fit because you were redeemed by his blood. You fit because when you got redeemed, you are adopted into the family of God. And I really believe from time to time, it is important as God's people, we need to take a trip down memory lane and remember church when we were without God, when we were without mercy, when we were without hope, and Jesus came took us in, saved us from our sins, took us from a devil's hell, and brought us in a glorious heaven, church, amen. What a sad dilemma we're in before Christ tonight. How pitiful and sad we were. Did you see their smart decision? I didn't give it, but let me read you what it says in verse 4. Verse 4 says this. They're together. This is before they went. They said, if we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city. And we shall die there. If we, and if we sit here, we will also die. Now, therefore, come. Let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. 
I love this. I'll tell you why. What, how they responded there is it gives you and I the answer of what to do when you don't know what to do. See, when you don't know what to do, who's ever been in a, who's ever been in a scenario you didn't know what to do? Right? There are always things that happen in life. You have no idea. What do I do? Well, I'm going to tell you what to do when you don't know what to do. You've got free choices. You, 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 can, you can go back. And here's what it says. If I go back, I die. If I stay where I am, I die. But if I go forward, I may live. Let me help some people tonight. If you go back to the world, you're going to die. If you say stagnant in your Christianity, you're going to die. But if you go forward, who remembers the song Onwards Christian Soldier? If you just go forward tonight, here you are, you came to an altar, you came to church, you heard the preaching, and you began to, you know, I need to adjust my attitude. I need to, you know, put aside, amen, how I, I want, what I want to do, or my purpose, or my plan. And I need, I need to humble myself and go forward. And the Bible says they begin to go forward to the Syrian camp. Do you know what it is tonight, church? These men tonight, they were saying, we are going to a place that we've never been before. They were saying to that, man, we're, we're going we're gonna to try something that we've never tried before. We're, we're going to step out into something that we've actually never stepped out into before. Tonight, church, the day you got saved was the day you said, I've never tried Jesus. But today I'm going to try Jesus. I've never tried the gospel. But today I'm going to try the Listen, aren't you glad for the day you came to the potter's house and you gave your life to Christ? Aren't you glad for the day you walked down the aisle when the preacher gave the call? You walked down the aisle, you came to the front and you bowed your knee. Aren't you glad that somebody was there to lead you in a sinner's prayer? Aren't you glad that with your heart you believed and your mouth you confessed that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father? And on that day, everything changed, beloved. Let me tell you tonight, church, how many people know that was one of the most smartest decisions you ever made in your life? Then there's their supernatural deliverance. They arrive in the camp. And I'll say this tonight. They arrive expecting to die. I'll tell you why. Because, listen to me. They, 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 know, they, 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 they know what's back in the city. Death. They know where they are. What's, what's expected because they're there. Death. But I've never been here before. I've never gone. I've never. I've never. I've never been to this place before. And 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 you 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 can forgive them to think that arriving in this place, all they're going to see is death. Arriving in this place, all they're going to see is negativity. Arriving in this place, all they're going to see is going to be horrible because all they can reference from is what they know. All they can reference from is where they've been. It's quite funny. When I think about it tonight, church, when they finally get there, they find out it was not what they expected. Can I say something tonight, church? Can I be real? When I first came to church, when I came to Wolfers all those years ago, it wasn't what I expected. When I, when, listen, when I walked through those doors in Folkestone Road, do you know why many people don't come to church? Because they already have a preconceived idea what to expect. If I come, if I, if I come, they only want my money. If I come, it's going to be so boring. If I, if I, if, if I come, how's God going to forgive me? I'm so dirty. Let me go fix my life up first. You know, some people, some people, don't, come, some people don't come to church because they think that you're going to get tricked. And it's amazing when you finally do come. Like God did for these lepers tonight. It's like almost like God, you, you, come, you come in not realizing that God was expecting you and God has made things ready for you. Can I say something tonight, church? This, this church is a move of God. It is all God. These guys didn't come to the camp 
Syrians everywhere. They didn't come to the camp and went, and all the Syrians, I mean, went, ah! and ran. They, they, they didn't, they, listen, they didn't, they didn't come with their street smarts. This is what we're going to do. They didn't, they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't come. They had no influence. They had no money. They had absolutely nothing tonight. Listen to me tonight, church. They simply walked in on grace. Do you know the day you got saved, you walked in on grace? Do you know the day you got saved, you walked into something very powerful tonight that is beyond your mind and your understanding? Listen, I had no hope. I had no help. I can only rely upon the grace of God. I was unexpected. I told somebody the other day, when I came, I mean, all those years ago, I came not expecting. I came not, I mean, coming to get saved. But I walked in, into the grace of God without hope, without mercy, without anything. And Jesus Christ, in his mercy, reached down and saved my soul. Listen, you better thank God for his grace today. You better thank God today that Jesus Christ died for you and gave you his grace. Look at what these guys walked into tonight. They walked into all these good things. And you imagine, here they are, they walked into all the stuff. And the Bible says there's gold there, there is silver there, there's food, they're eating, they're chomping, they're putting maybe a crown on their head, putting a, man, a gold bracelet, and then they're covering. And the fact, Bible says they, they're in one tent, then they go into another tent, and they're walking around and they have all this stuff stuffing themselves and piling their pockets. Then hiding it. How sad. Because what's powerful about this, these guys, they're no longer surviving. Back in the day, when people would ask you questions like, How are you doing? It was almost like the cliche question, the cliche answer, I'm surviving. These guys are not surviving, they're thriving. They're blessed now. I was reading about accounts of people who had nothing uh, these people that had absolutely nothing then did but they were very gifted in uh, uh like maybe football or some form of sports and now they're signing all these multi-million uh, of dollars multi-million pound contracts they were poor now they have all this money they don't know what to do with it and this account says a large majority of them after they retired are now broke And many people said these words. They didn't know how to handle good things. They didn't know how to handle wealth. They didn't know how to handle money. Can I stop and say this today? Some of God's people don't know how to handle good things. You've walked into something very powerful tonight. People talk about white privilege. Listen, the real tragedy is Christian privilege. The real tragedy is salvation's privilege. Because we fail to say that we are blessed tonight. That you have the word of God. You have the inerrant, the infallible, the unchanging word of God. Listen to me. You are in a good church. No, God, forgive me. You are in a great church tonight. You, you are in the best church in all of Tottenham tonight. Beyond a shadow of a doubt. And not because I'm the pastor. You are in the best church because Jesus Christ is here right now. You are you in the best church because of his blood, his mercy, and his grace that he's extended upon your life and my life tonight. And it is so sad tonight. Listen, don't hide it tonight from people. Don't hide tonight, amen, what God has done. That the fact that God has given you homes. That the God the fact that God has given you a life. A new, listen, don't hide your life from people tonight. And you know, here's some people say, well, I don't have much. I only have very, very little. You know, my, uh, I'm still a mess. I'm still trying to work myself out. You know, I'm still like, listen, tonight, you are far better positioned than many, many other people today. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew 25, verse 23. This is from the English Standard Version. He says this. His master said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Tonight, you're in this service. Can I ask you a question tonight? How much have you hidden? It's amazing we get saved and we don't want to invite people to our homes. We get saved, we want to invite people to our lives. 
and God has done it all. I want to close quick look at the conviction. Because one of the problems of age, and when I say by age, I'm talking about the older you get. Now, I know some older folks here are going to try and come against me, but it's too bad. It's true. <laughs> one of the problems of age is hoarding. How many, how many of my hoarders do I have in the house tonight? Thank you for them honesty tonight. Tasha, you know you hoard. And hoarding tonight can be classified two ways. Hoarding can be classified, number one, you're holding on to rubbish. Then you get, you, you never know, you're going to, you know, you, you, you get a mask, you know, you still use the same mask from March last year, you know, just hold, just hold on to it, you know, just, <laughs> just, just hold on. Like, you never know, you never know, you never know, they may, they may bring back. No, 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 no. And you just hold it. You buy stuff you don't need and you just hold it and it's just rubbish. But also deny hoarding can also mean holding on to things that you should be giving away. These lepers were hoarding. And in the middle of their hoarding tonight, it's like they paused. Let me say something tonight. From time to time, it's good to pause. They paused. And verse 9 says this. Then they said to one another, we are not doing right. Let me translate for you. This ain't right. Oh, okay, you want proper English? This is not right. They, 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 it's not like they're grabbing the food, they're grabbing the gold, silver, all the garments, all that. And they say, you know what? Nah, this ain't right. I wonder who said that before. This ain't right. How many of you said that this ain't right? How many of you said I ain't right? They said this ain't right. But they didn't stop there. They said this. Listen to what they said. This day is a day of good news. Let me translate for us. But there's a bunch of people out there. And God has brought some in here that need what we have. And their conclusion is this ain't right. Do you remember, maybe it happened to you, maybe it didn't happen to you, I don't know. Do you remember when you came to church and the complete stranger within the church or somebody you saw their face from time to time knew your name? And they said your name, hey, hi. And you're like, wow, they remember my name. Or do you remember when somebody says, hey, come out. Let me, let's, let, me, let, let me take you somewhere. Let me bless you. Or come to my house for fellowship. Remember those, those, those days? I was talking to evangelist Ernie Toppin the other day. We were fellowshipping. And Ernie was talking about, asking me some questions about South Africa and different things, stuff like that. And he said, he said, uh, he said, missionaries are his heroes. And, 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 and I've had people ask me many times, how could you take your family, your whole family, and go to a completely different nation and stay there for over 10 years and do what you did? Especially to a nation like South Africa and especially to where we went in South Africa. How? Or why did you do it? Let me ask you a question. Why do we speak to complete strangers on the street about Jesus? People, I, I, I have no idea who they are. I've never met them in my life. Why, why do we do that for church? Why, 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 do we, why, why, why should we remember new converts' names? Why should we go and check them knowing that you can go and check them and they may not be there? Why, 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 why should you even try and reach out to them knowing that they will drive you crazy? I'll tell you why tonight. Because I'm committed to giving what by God's grace that I found to people who don't know Jesus. 
You know what gets me vex? What gets me vex is people who had nothing. Now they have everything and they don't want to share. That vexes me. They had absolute, they had zero. They got it all, but now they don't want to share. I have absolutely no respect for that. Because the truth being known tonight, you don't deserve it any more than the next person. And I'm not talking tonight about enjoying it. Because listen, if you're saved, if you're born again and you're not enjoying your salvation, there's something wrong with you. Because again, you're blessed. God has blessed you. God has, the Bible talks about with heavenly riches and you are sitting in heavenly places with Christ tonight. You know, I'm not talking about every day, man, the fantastic is great and groom. But if you're not enjoying your salvation at a level, well, tonight you can answer this altar call and ask God to give you the joy of salvation like David did. God restored to me the joy of salvation. Now I ask a question. When was the last time you led somebody to Jesus Christ? When was the last time you won somebody to Jesus? When? You know, the other day on Sunday, I think it was, Brother Tony was telling me he, 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 there was a lady at work. He witnessed to her and she came, she got saved. And just, he was just excited. He was beaming with it. I think her name is Hannah. Beaming, just excited. Wow. You know, just that's that joy that God is using me to bring somebody into the kingdom. So the again, when was the last time you led somebody to Christ? Okay, let me turn around a little bit. Have you ever led somebody to Christ? Even to come to the altar and pray with them and lead them in a simple sinner's prayer. Even that. Okay, let's do it in a completely different way tonight. What about helping to establish a new convert so much so that your fingerprint around that person's life? You've impacted them. They can always reference back to you. You know, from time to time, I don't want to embarrass her. Mina will talk about the Richmonds. And you know what? They have put their, her finger, their fingerprints on her life. Can, be, can, you, can somebody say, you know what? So and so, you know what? And a reference to you. The bottom line is, is how can we have this glorious gospel and not share it? The joy that I'm having today, I'm seeing new converts coming and they're bringing their friends to church. It's such a joy that you know what? I'm bringing you to something I believe it's worth you coming to. And they're bringing them. Pastor Lewis, you know, I can't remember the name of the rap, but I asked him, I want to read, read a little bit of the line of it. He says these words, I'm just a beggar trying to tell some other beggars where to find the bread of life. It's Jesus Christ who came and fed us. And we forgot that we were not just beggars, we were lepers. Every single one of us who claimed Christ, we were lepers outside of the city. You see, here's the truth tonight as I want to close. Jesus is more precious than all the stuff these lepers are hoarding. He's more precious than the silver, the gold, the garments. He, he's, far, he's, far more, he's, 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 he's far more worth than anything that you could think about tonight. And yet, these lepers felt to be wrong not to share things that had eternal value to men. Yet we have Jesus.
Tonight, the crime of the century, I really believe he's been committed by the church. Because here's the thing tonight. If these lepers had said nothing or did nothing, the worst that would have happened is that people would have died. But if you and I, when we don't say anything, when you and I don't do it, when you and I don't give our all to see people established, not only would they die, but they will end up in hell. And that's a crime. That's a crime I surely can't live with my conscience about. I want to know that I've done my best and I've tried. And after that, it's up to them. But tonight, can we put our hands in our hearts and you know, I've done my best and I've tried. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes in this place. Amen. I'm just a beggar. I'm just a leper. Trying to tell some other lepers where to find the bread of life. It's Jesus who came and fed us. Tonight, maybe you're in the service and you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ. Friend, that's why the church exists. The church, somebody says, is the only organization that exists for its non-members. It exists for you. It exists so you can come and be part of the church. It exists so you can come and be part of the body of Christ, the Jesus who came and died and bled and, 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 and rose again. So you would not be separated from God for all eternity. And tonight, maybe you're in this service and you have not given your life to Christ. You say, Pastor, I'm not right with God. I'm, I'm a mess. I'm, 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 I'm lost. I have not been forgiven of my sins. And I don't want to die and, 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 and end up in the devil's hell for all eternity. You're saying Jesus paid for my sins so I wouldn't have to perish. Well, tonight, I want to put my faith. I want to give my life to Christ. If that's you, lift your hand up and put it down tonight. I want to pray with you in this place. Slip it up and put it down. Say, here's my hand. I see that hand. God bless you. Anybody else? I see the hand back anybody else lift your hand tonight amen see that hand god bless you sister anybody else slip it up tonight this is for you believe it or not god has set this service up for you maybe tonight you've backslid you're away from god you're not walking with god anymore you once were but you've drifted friend it's time to get reconnected again it's time to get back online again it's time to get right with jesus again he didn't go to the cross simply for you just to come to church he came, he went to the cross to save you. And after that, the right response is to serve him. You know, you're not serving him tonight. You know, you don't live in for him tonight. Tonight, you want to recommit your life. If that's you, lift your hand tonight. Lift your hand, lift your hand. Join these others too. Amen. God bless you tonight. Quickly, quickly, quickly. I don't want to hold it very long. We want to do other things quickly. Final time tonight, unsaved. You're not right with God or you've backslid. And tonight, you want to give your life to Jesus. It's been a long time. Come on, lift your hand up tonight. Lift it up, lift it up. Here's my hand, Jesus. I'm doing this for you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You mean in the back? Amen. God bless you. Sisters, look at me. Two ladies, look at me. You mean it? You mean it? I want you to come. God bless you. Come, 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 come. Come in the front. Come, come, come. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Praise God. We need three ladies tonight. God bless you. Ladies, it's your turn. We've been seeing men come. It's time for you, ladies. There's two wonderful ladies here. One over here. Sorry. Please spend time with her as well. Praise God. 